An African side has never won the World Cup. Could this be the year? And if so, which team is going to do it or go furthest in this Qatar World Cup? Let's take a moment, I think, because every four years you get that opportunity to kind of go to look at, at football. And, you know, I think Africa in particular, you can kind of see how much closer they're getting to that first World Cup win. Kweku, how do you feel about African football and, and the countries uh, in this tournament in particular? So, I was following AFCON quite closely at the beginning of this year. Um, I'm going to be completely honest, going through a little bit of a lull at the moment. It's a huge blow that Egypt aren't at this World mm. Cup. Obviously, Africa's biggest star is Mo Salah. Mm. And he's, he's suffered a double blow, not making this World Cup and also losing in the final of the AFCON to Senegal. Um, so, yeah, it's not, it's not at its peak at the moment. I'd say probably African football hit its peak between 2010 and 2014, that's when we really saw, maybe not as many su individual superstars, but we saw teams, strong teams we yeah. saw the Ivory Coast, Ghana yeah. were really strong, Nigeria pretty strong at that time. Um, but AFCON was a very, very fun tournament, um, probably headlined by Vincent Abubakar, who had all the smoke for Mo Salah, saying that he doesn't really rate him that highly, he <laughs> thinks he's a better player than him. Um, so he's one to watch for Cameroon, he was mm. top scorer at AFCON. Um, Obviously, I'm Ghanaian, so I've got, I'm keeping a close eye on Ghana, um, one of the lowest ranked teams in the competition. Um, but we have got that revenge mission against Uruguay in the group stages. Um, Ghana were the team closest to making the World Cup semi-final, um, I think it was 12 years ago now, in 2010. Um, but yeah, if you look at these African teams, I'm looking more towards North Africa and Morocco as probably the team to watch in this tournament in terms of progressing the furthest. And obviously, you've got to look at Senegal, who won who won African Cup of Nations at the beginning of this year. So let's, let's uh, slow down. Let's, let's yeah, work well, our way through it. Let's start with, with Cameroon. You talk about uh, Bubakar there, uh, top scorer at AFCON, um, which I think... Allows him to say what he wants, actually, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting how he gets uh, on. Um, ranked 43rd in uh, by FIFA. Um, also, one of my favourite players to watch, Anguissa, yeah. as a central yeah, midfielder. Like. They've got a lot of players, a lot of names that Premier League fans will, will know. Um, but they have sort of struggled in past World Cups, even with the likes of Samuel Eto'o there. Um, how do you feel about Cameroon, who are in a very tough group here? Switzerland, Serbia and Brazil. I think really and truly when I just looked at the group and I just thought unfortunately finishing bottom regardless of like who they've got it's mainly just because Serbia are so strong we spoke about in a separate video Switzerland have Granit Xhaka not that he's their only good player but they're a very good side and they're a very good tournament side yeah. which is very important for Switzerland and then you've got Brazil who are the massive favourites I think this is a group where Cameroon will hope they can start okay because uh, Brazil plays Serbia and Cameroon plays Switzerland so if they can get a result over Switzerland in the first game then you start to go, we've got a little bit of confidence, something's yeah. going to happen here. Attacking-wise, they've got a few options. Chupo Moting is brilliant for Cameroon. I know he uh, gets a lot of disrespect on the internet, but I actually think he's a, he's a very good forward. Mm. They've got Togo Kambi there as well, and they've got Brian Abumo. But then the problem is, <laughs> going backwards, they can see too many goals. Um, and then, I just think in this group, you, you, they might get battered 4-0 by Brazil, and that's the end of your tournament. So, I do fear for Cameroon. I don't know if you feel... Any, any bit more confident. If there's any Cameroonians out there watching, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I love to mention Anguisa because like you say, fans of fans of Premier League football probably don't remember him in the fondest light at the time of, at Fulham, but he kind of reinvented himself. Well, I mean, um, I think even, even at Fulham that was misleading yeah. as well because I think he's, he's very, very press-proof. And mm. for, I think for, it's got, it's got, he's got some good workers in there, if you know yeah. what I mean. That sounds... Um, uh, patronising maybe a little bit but that's not, not really what I mean you know the, the AU brothers for, for example being in that side might allow some of those individuals to, to thrive that little bit and that's why I bring up Anguissa because I think he's he's got that ability to, to make something happen right? yeah he has he has got that ability and I think we've seen it a little bit more um, during his time um, in Italy like you say he's they're, they're limited by the fact that their group is very, very tough. Like yeah. you mentioned, Switzerland are a very, very good tournament team. We saw it in the Euros. We all know about the exploits of Brazil and Serbia. Um, I've got some players that I think will make a mark at this World Cup. So Cameroon will put in a good show in, but I don't see them progressing out of the group. Do you put Ghana in that same kind of bracket? Because I think that's that's the thing for, for a lot of these African sides, is that they're, they're in groups with a lot of you know powerhouses. Mm. And, and so that makes it tough for them. And, and Ghana who are ranked 61st. They've got Portugal, South Korea and Uruguay. Again, really, really How fun is that group, by the way? You've got a team from Asia, you've got a team yeah. from Europe, you've got a team from Africa and you've got a team from South America. And They'll have a little bit of extra motivation though, won't yeah. they, against Uruguay? Oh, the revenge mission is on. It is on. <laughs> and I think Luis Suarez will play a big part for Uruguay uh, in this World Cup. 
it's going to be very, very difficult for Ghana. I'd love to pick them to, to qualify up this group, but they just haven't got the superstars of yesteryear. If you remember that 2010 side, you had uh, Pants still, my question didn't even make it to that World Cup. You had Kevin Prince Boateng, you had Stephen Pio. You had some really, really good players. Um, yeah. This side is not listed with talent, but what we have seen with this Ghana side is the influence of Chris Houston, who's come in as a technical uh, advisor. And we've seen him convince players like Inaki Williams, who was eligible to play for Spain, but now he's playing for Ghana. You see Tarek Lamptey as well, who's playing for Ghana. So we've really bolstered the squad in that way. Mm. But the linchpin of this Ghana side is Thomas Partey. Luckily for, for Ghana fans, we play in a similar system to Arsenal. It's almost like a 4-1-4-1 formation. Partey is that linchpin in midfield that kind of dictates everything and shields that back four. Um, so we need to see the best of him. He didn't look amazing in AFCON. Um, I'm hoping he's, having a, he's going to have a breakthrough tournament at this World Cup. We've seen how great he's been for Arsenal this season. So Ghana's hopes, they, they rest on, on, um, on Thomas Partey. And also the IU brothers who've been in and around the side for so long. But uh, yeah, it, it kills me to say it, but Ghana aren't making it out of this group. The thing is, I think with this group, because it's entertaining, anything could happen. Uh, so they, they, they'll play Korea, and that, that could be 4-1 to Korea. It could be 4-1 mm. to Ghana. Could they'll be play, a few draws in here as well, yeah, right? Yeah, and you're kind of hoping if you're a Ghana fan, Portugal, Uruguay go head-to-head -head and draw, and you beat Korea. And then I think the biggest thing about the World Cup is there's only three games, and anything can happen. Mm. So... You start well and Portugal don't. You might have a ticket to the next round. Uh, I do think, like you said, it relies on Thomas Partey and that's very different to the other sides in this group. So I don't feel overly confident for them, but a side that I feel very confident for. Come on. My boys, <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Morocco. Yes. Um, honestly, I, I think people are sleeping on them. They're, they're ranked 21st in the FIFA rankings. I didn't actually know they were ranked that high. They did lose Amin Herrick literally four or five days ago to a horrible injury. Yeah, which um, is big. And he's a huge huge player for them. Cause they but do they play. have a replacement? I, I could I could, put, um, I could put a name forward as a Queensbot Rangers fan. I yeah. know, I know who it is. At least Chair. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> I'm sitting on him. Chair. He's the guy. He has been amazing for QPR this season. He's really gone up a level. And I, I do think there, there comes a point with championship players when you watch him, you go, okay, he needs... It's time. Mm, it's time to go. And he's ready. He's in great form. He's having several touches of the ball, which I think is important. But he probably won't even start, which is a shame. But I think he'll have a bit more of an impact. Can I ask a question, though? Okay, we're talking about international football here. But we saw at AFCON, um, Ilya Sher was in great form for QPR going into the, the tournament. Didn't really feature yeah. that much. Came back and he was in, I wouldn't say terrible form. Yeah, he was, he was, poor. He was poor. poor towards yeah. back in the season for QPR. Are you worried that this could happen again? Maybe, like I say, he's not guaranteed starter in this Morocco side, which is insane. Yeah, I think it, it looks like, uh, in terms of substitutes coming on, Buffal is the one that comes on. So I think he will be the replacement for Harrit. But I just do think he has a, a little part to play as, as you know, as a, as a guy who is small. When often it's a lot of there's a lot of structure going on. You kind of need those players who can get past a player, and he, he has that. In, in absolute spades. I, I really like the, the fullback positions for Morocco as yeah. well. Uh, Majroy and Hakimi, of course, as well, is, is amazing. Um, and, and I think, again, I think you've got to go back to the group here. Croatia, and it's a Croatia they're side. Right, that, they're at the end. Yeah, they the are end, at the end. end, and end I, that, the big question for me in terms of Morocco making it out of the group is the metronome of Modric, is that enough? Because it, ha it was at the Euros. They mm. weren't great at the Euros, but the metronome of Modric was enough. Mm -hmm. Belgium, I think, will be too strong. Canada, I, I think, could... They're going to cause an upset. No, I think the opposite. I really? Think, I think they're going to go, oh, rabbits in the headlights uh, yeah, here, yeah, a little yeah. bit, if I'm honest. But I feel like Morocco are, are one of the front runners. Tunisia, I don't, wanna, I, I don't really want to spend too much time on them because I just don't see them doing anything, no. if I'm honest. Um, so for me, the two that could be the most dangerous and go the furthest are Morocco... And, and Senegal, who've obviously had some bad news this week. Yeah, I think the Sadio Mane injury is huge for Senegal because a lot of the football mm. they play is built around Sadio Mane. In a way, maybe to how Portugal play with Ronaldo, whereby the whole team sort of filters to him despite the quality of the other players. And they have got very good other players. And I think the criticism from a lot of people on Twitter and social media is Mane's not their only good player. But I think people forget in tournament football, if your leader, if your linchpin is out of form or isn't really feeling it, it really does affect the other players and it's so unlucky because he never gets injured yeah. um for me before the groups the sort of the before Mane's injury i was like they'll they'll test ne netherlands all the way but then because of his injury i'm now at a stage where i'm going i actually don't know who finishes second which is why i really worry about senegal um mainly because you, you lose your main man you, your main scorer the leader of your side i just don't know how you recover from that especially because he traveled yeah. so the, the rest of the team's probably going Oh, we've got him, we've right, got him. Right. Yeah. And then a day later, he's gone. Well, Ishmael Asar is going to have to carry a lot of that burden for, um, 
for the Senegal side. And where he's benefited a lot in the past is that all the attention has been on Sadio Mane. He's, be, he's been able to go about his business quite quietly and is quite important for them during AFCON. I think I still I still have faith in the Senegal side. They've got talent all over the pitch. If you look at Gold, they've got Edward Mendy. Um, the centre-back partnership with Diallo and Kula Bali mm. are very, very experienced. Um, and they've got like a, a functional working midfield. So I, I do still like Senegal's chances in terms of progressing out of this group. Mm. If you look at Qatar and Ecuador, I think they've got good chances against those sides. Hey, don't um, sleep on Qatar. <laughs> Come on, Qatar. <laughs> but I do think that the, uh, the miss of Sadio Mane is going to be huge for them. And it's unfortunate because they were, I think, Africa's best hope of getting yeah. getting far in this tournament. I think I think it's, as I say, Senegal and Morocco. I think the thing about Senegal, with that group, you've got Ecuador and Qatar, who it's not going to be amazing football and loads of goals. They're going to be tight games. And so I still think you've got a good spine there. Ishmael Assar has been playing a slightly different role for Watford, where he's kind of getting on the ball that little bit more. Not that, that usual winger that you yeah. see for Senegal, but also for Watford in the Premier League over the last couple of years. Um, so, final question is, and let us know in the comments down below, who, who will go the furthest out of these guys? I'll go first. I actually think... I think Morocco and Senegal will make it through. And I think Senegal, because of that group, I think you get that second place is just there, there and up for grabs. I think if anyone's go further... It's got to be Morocco for me. What do you think? Um, I think the only African team to make it out of the group will be Senegal. And I think the round 16 is where they will fall short. They play against, hopefully, for our state, England in that round. And I just think Senegal, they've just got the most talent. I know Morocco are a bit of a wild card, but they're, I just think Senegal have just got enough about them to get out of that group. Like I said, we've touched on the other teams that group. I think they're stronger than them. So, yeah, Senegal, my pick to get the furthest in this tournament. I've got Morocco topping the group. Um, so, and then they'll play... Spain, and I think they'll beat them as well. So uh, I've got a big feeling for Morocco. I've got a huge feeling okay. for them to go far, and I really hope they do. But do let us know who you think will go the furthest out of the African sides. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.